So guys, this is gonna be a bit of a voyage of discovery episode of my video blog. I have the P67A GD65, which I was able to manually tune in an overclock of 4.7 gigahertz on my Core i7-2600K unlocked processor. And MSI asked me to try out their OC Genie 2 button. So this is their one button overclocking. I press the button, I'm pressing the power switch, and now we're going to find out how close you can get to my manually tuned overclock by just pressing that button on your MSI motherboard. So first of all, we're going to boot up. Uh, I already set the hard drive to AHCI mode in the BIOS, so uh, hopefully that is still knows it's there. OC Genie is enabled. Uh, it's not recommended to change anything in the BIOS menu, but changing the, the mode of your SATA controller is probably still okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just to make sure that, um, oops, that's the wrong thing. It's under advanced, it's under integrated peripherals. Yeah, so we're still in HCI mode, so we didn't reset that. I'm going to press F10 and restart, and let's find out what OC Genie has set this chip to. So we're going to boot into Windows, and that's probably going to take a minute or so, so maybe I'll talk about Military Class 2 while we wait. So Military Class 2, highly conductive polymerized capacitors, up to eight times the lifespan of a regular solid capacitor. Super ferrite choke is 30% higher current capacity than a standard traditional choke. And then solid capacitors give you 10 plus years ultra long lifetime. Uh, yeah, it's not doing anything yet. Okay, uh, cameraman's telling me I should pay attention to the screen, but it's not doing anything. So they're saying up to 10 plus years of lifetime under full load. So that's assuming you're gaming for 12 years straight without sleeping, which some WoW players could probably do. So there you go. That could be a realistic usage scenario for some people. Okay, we're booted up into Windows. Yay. Okay, so I've explained this a few times in the past. It always uh, asks me to reactivate every time I change hardware, so I don't really bother to activate anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to launch CPU-Z and see what we're running at because I actually have no idea. So at idle, we are running at 3.5 gigahertz. So that's a multiplier of 35 with OC Genie turned on. Okay, and then let's see what happens if we run eight threads of Prime95. Really? I wonder if I'm doing it wrong. This really doesn't seem very OC'd. Okay, give me a minute and I will find out what is going on here. So this is me actually using a manual. So I'm going to see if uh, that'll tell me anything about how to enable OC Genie properly because as far as I can tell I haven't done it right. Oh, so there's an OC Genie software application. Okay, so that's the only thing in there. So I'll Keep, I'll keep checking manuals and I'll let you guys know if I figure anything out here. Okay, so we're sort of trying to figure out what's going on here. It says here that you can disable the OC Genie function in the BIOS setup, which I haven't done. So we're here in the BIOS now. And what the BIOS is telling me is that we are overclocked right now, including the RAM. It's loaded an XMP profile all on its own. It's increased the CPU voltage. It's increased the RAM voltage. And in theory, we're running at 4.2 gigahertz of adjusted CPU frequency. So, while you said, okay, we don't really need to use MSI Control Center. Whoops, I right clicked instead of left clicked. Here, why don't we set that to enable just in case that makes a difference. So we're going to save our BIOS profile and then reset. So in theory, OC Genie is working now and we're going to boot up in just a moment. So that was me using a manual. You'll probably never see this on Tech Tips again, and I'm pretty sure you've never seen it before, but there it is. So what are they claiming? So they're claiming OCG, OC Genie enabled gives you up to 36% performance increase on the integrated GPU, although I don't think that actually works on P67. At least that's my understanding. Cameraman's like giving me a funny look right now. 
I've really run out of things to talk about. It's okay though, because we're in the BIOS now. Or in the BIOS, we're in Windows now. Okay, so let's fire up CPU Z and see if magically, by rebooting once. Uh, there, okay, it works now. So there you go. So 4.2 gigahertz is what we're running at, I'm assuming. If we run eight threads, so we're stressing out four cores to the max. And now let's see what happens if we go ahead and do something like, say for example, we run two tortured test threads of small FFT. Let's see if it is leaving Intel Turbo Boost enabled or if it's going for a straight overclock. So it looks like MSI has gone very conservatively here. They're actually giving it about as much voltage as I gave it to reach 4.7 gigahertz stable, but it's better to go conservative and assume that some chips won't overclock as well as others when you're doing like a, a one button overclocking method like this versus having it take it to the limits. So there you go, OC Genie took us about half of the way there compared to manually overclocking, but I would still recommend a manual overclock versus a canned overclock in this case. So thank you for checking out my video blog. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, guides, reviews, and videos and whatnot. Now you should look at the OC Genie button. That's what we're talking about. Good work, cameraman.